This is CHS TV News. Good morning, Pedro. I'm Paige with Good Morning Announcements for Wednesday, September 29th. Let's start the show with a message from Ms. O'Keefe. Good morning, Gail. So today we continue with our education around Orange Shirt Day and the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. The orange shirt that was featured as our prayer picture this morning was installed on our stage last night by our Liturgy Imagination team. It's a physical representation of all of the Indian residential schools that existed in Canada at one time. Each one of those large shirts has the name of 140 Indian residential schools printed on them. The Lit team invites you to view it, to read the names of the schools. This first map that you see shows you all of the residential schools that existed throughout Canada. The next map shows you that what we want you to realize is that so far of the 5,000 unmarked graves that have been found, they were found at just 11 of these 140 schools. The 11 schools are represented by the black dots on this map. Since the beginning of calling this place Canada, settler Canadians have worked to make the Indigenous people more like Europeans. One horrible idea was, and I quote, to kill the Indian in the child by taking Indigenous children away from their families to live in residential schools where they were not allowed to go home. At these schools, children were physically punished if they spoke their own language, were forced to be Christian, and sometimes forced to change their names that sounded more like Europeans. They suffered physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. More than 60% of these schools were run by the Catholic Church. I'll say that again. More than 60% of these schools were run by the Catholic Church. The word truth comes before the word reconciliation. This is a very deliberate emphasis that truth is an important first step in reconciliation between people. If we could put up the next slide. The meaning of the word reconciliation is based on the idea of restoring friendships and harmony. And the next slide about, uh, thank you. It's a journey acknowledging, understanding, and accepting the truth of what has happened, saying and meaning sorry, resolving differences and working together. There are some calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which have to deal directly with the Catholic Church. The slide that was just previous to this one by Chief Cadmus DeLorme said very rightly that none of us created residential schools. None of us today created the Indian Act, yet we have all inherited it and we need to do something about it. The first call to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that has to do with the Catholic Church is asking Pope Francis to come to Canada and offer an apology. There's lots of other uh, examples of popes who have issued official apologies from pe to different groups of people. Pope Benedict offered one to people in Ireland who suffered sexual abuse by priests, and Pope Francis offered an apology on Bolivian soil for the sins and crimes committed against Indigenous people during the colonial conquest of the Americas. Pope Francis offered another apology in Ireland to women and children for the abuses that they suffered. Pope Francis has invited a delegation to the Vatican December 17th and the 20th of this year. He will meet with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people, including survivors of the residential schools, Indigenous elders, leaders, and youth. There have been many individual apologies by religious orders that were directly involved in the running of the residential schools. But up until this past Friday, there had not been one apology by the Catholic churches in Canada. You are living at a moment of history, Gales. This past Friday, September the 24th, the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops issued an apology on behalf of the entire Canadian Catholic Church. It's not a very long apology, and I hope that you'll take some time to read it. It's featured on many different websites. One of the first apologies ever issued in 1991 was actually by our own Bishop Douglas Crosby on behalf of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, the group of priests who run St. Patrick's Church. The other calls to action with half, that have to do with the Catholic Church are numbers 59, 60, and 61. They have to do with the diocese and religious orders who are part of the Indian Residential School Agreement, but also it has to do with each and every one of us, for us as Catholics to do our part to learn about how we 
were part of this very oppressive system. One thing that's been in the media that you may have seen is around the money that was that the Catholic Church was asked to pay. So there were three separate, the next slide I think has it, there we go. So there were three streams of compensation that you can see there. The one that's been in the news and the one that we will be working on and that the bishops addressed in their apology this past Friday is the last one. The church was supposed to raise $25 million in a best efforts campaign, and they only raised $4 million. And so you will be hearing more about this campaign in your churches in the years to come, hopefully just in the weeks. Hopefully it won't take us years to raise that money. There have been a number of different Catholic organizations who have been working for truth and reconciliation. Sister Margot Ritchie is one of them. She says for us as Catholics that we are called into the depths of reconciliation, that we can give space for a future of healed relationships. Hopefully tomorrow, Gales, as we begin our school-wide liturgy, tomorrow and Thursday with the focus on truth and reconciliation, we as Canadian Catholics will take our responsibility for truth and reconciliation very seriously. Thank you. Thanks, Miss. Tomorrow you are encouraged to wear an orange shirt as September 30th marks the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. The day honors the lost children and survivors of residential schools, their families, and communities. Public commemoration of the tragic and painful history of ongoing impacts of residential schools is a vital component of the reconciliation process. So please wear an orange shirt with your uniform bottoms tomorrow. Also tomorrow, we are having our first school-wide virtual liturgy, beginning at 9 a.m. with Father Yerrick. Senior boys basketball tryouts continue tomorrow at 7 p.m. and next Monday, October 4th at 7 p.m. These are the last two tryouts for the senior boys basketball team. If you cannot attend, please find coaches Fortino or Harvey today. Today, the Cathedral Field Hockey Team plays BR at the St. Mary's Field. Teachers, please allow players to leave at 1.15 in order to change and take the bus. Players will meet at the back doors and leave as a team. Thanks from coaches Lucier and Cantoni. And lastly, with their teacher's permission, all members of the junior football team are asked to meet Mr. Susie in room 109 for a quick meeting right after announcements. And those are all of your announcements for today, Cathedral. Friends and family would like to wish Kathleen McPhee a very happy 16th birthday. Have an amazing day today, Kathleen. Have a great day, girls, and thanks for watching.